What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Tenda Overnight Podcast. My name is Ryan Veet, and again, I've got Mr. K on with us. Mr. K, how you doing, sir? Man, highly motivated. Um, thank you again for for um, having this discussion, man. Really excited to get started. So this is our second episode, and Mr. K has been on uh, both so far, and today's uh, Sunday, June 11th. And last week, we'll touch on that. Um, we will throw our quote back up if you haven't watched the last video. Uh, Mr. K, do you want to go ahead and read that? Yes, sir. So sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you have been buried, but actually you have been planted. Christine Kane. Absolutely. And so to dive into that uh, and to kind of break it apart. So we talked about uh, this analogy where your life, your perception uh, can be like a, a seed being planted of, of a tree. And uh, you can either, you know, just waste that opportunity, lay down and die and accept your fate or mm -hmm. you can grow. And yeah. in order to grow, you know, trees send out roots. They seek out resources and people for support and uh, nutrients and uh, to be vitalized and water. You've got to uh, receive motivation and reinforcement daily. You can't just be watered just once. So you got to find the people in your life that are going to actually water you and uh, be involved in that growth process. And then sunlight. Uh, you need to find that warm glow of uh, the mentor to inspire you. You need someone who is one, if not several levels above you that uh, you want to impress, that you want to make proud. Someone who, in the context of your journey, who knows start to finish what you're after, they know what those milestones are and what the significance of those wins that you can take those to and that you can go to for advice. Um, and then one thing we didn't really talk about, but I thought about this while I was on vacation, is you need the gardener. Um, hmm. And that is the guiding hand that's not really part of your journey, but they are there kind of playing the role of overwatch. Um, they are the ones who are pulling those weeds that can uh, detract from your experience, from your journey. They are cutting back the vines that grow and latch onto you. And they're just that leech. They suck all the, the energy and life force out of you and even cut back those shade trees that overshadow you, that don't mm -hmm. want you to succeed, that block you from that light. So those can be the distractions, keeping those out and pruning everything back and just kind of keeping an eye on you. And I think that could be the coach the boss, mm -hmm. um, exactly. you know, someone who plays that role, uh, can even be a parent, that caretaker. Um, and then I added this question mark down at the bottom of this image, uh, where that water is dripping down from the tree that we've got on the screen here. Um, and that's where we talked about, well, what is the purpose, the function of a tree? It's to grow, it's to provide shade, it's to provide shelter, it's to provide safety, it's to provide wisdom, it's to bear fruit and drop down mm -hmm. and nourish others, right? So who are you? Yeah going to you know nourish what impact are you going to have once you have grown are you going to continue to to help right and to guide so we added that so yeah. adding on to that discussion um our new quote and we're going to piggyback off of last week's conversation don't create enemies unnecessarily when you should be recruiting allies right yeah. so mr k can we agree that life is hard we'll go through a couple statements is life hard yes Yes. Very simple. Not a trick question. Don't overthink. <laughs> Can we agree? Life is not fair. <laughs> this, yes. We're not getting philosophical yet. Life is not fair. Yeah. Yes. Life is yes. not fair. Can we agree that it is not my fault? Yes. Right. We've all said that. We've all felt that. So mm -hmm. of those three statements, you know, uh, you know, we can agree on all of those, but do stating those, those observations, does that change the nature of the situation or your circumstances? It does not. It does not. You might as well have just said the car is blue, right? So <laughs> it really doesn't do anything for you. Like, that's great. Now, what are you going to do about it? Right. So that's what there we're going to get into today. And uh, before we jump uh, all the way in, we'll put that back on the screen here. Don't create enemies unnecessarily when you should be recruiting allies. So be, as I get my uh, drawing white erase board on up here, um, what does that mean to you? Like, don't create enemies unnecessarily. We'll break it down into two parts. So real, real quickly, I want to kind of go back to last week when you were mm -hmm. talking about the, the purpose of the tree, right? To, to provide shade, shelter, mm -hmm. fruit, nourishment. And I, I feel like motives um, play a big part in our life experience, right? And so mm -hmm. when, I, when I come to someone and I say, hey, I can see this person as my ally, right? Or I can see this person as my mentor or see this person as my gardener or, or the person that provides the sunlight or the water for my life. Um, 
the question the the question that we really need to ask ourselves is why is this person just in my life so that I can so that I can um, reach the goal or whatever outcome it is that I want to fulfill in my life or am I really it, it do I really want this person in my life so that ultimately I can become a tree so that ultimately I can go back mm -hmm. and, and reach back and provide be that sunlight that that shade that shelter that fruit that water that that planter that gardener for someone else right and so for me man motives go a very long way right motives go a very long way and so am i doing this just to kind of appease what i need in the moment or is this something that is that fulfills a greater purpose um, in my life story and not only in my life story, but in the grand scheme of things, um, to me, that, that plays a really big part. Mm -hmm. Um, and so when I think about man, enemies and allies, right. And, and again, I'm a words guy. So I go to go to dictionary.com and I see an enemy is a person who feels hatred for or fosters harmful designs against, or engages in antagonistic activities against another, an adversary or an opponent. And I think about my life, man, I'm a, I'm a pretty easy going guy, right? I, I, I like to go with the flow and I don't know if, if I have any like active enemies in my life, if, if I do, mm -hmm. I don't know about it, right? But I may be their enemy, but they're, they're not necessarily mine because if for me, mm -hmm. I tend to, if, if, if I, if I sense that tension from another human, another person, I'm just not around them, right? I'm, I'm a grown man. Like I got choices here, right? Mm -hmm. um, I was listening right. to someone today in church talk and it was very powerful when she said, you know, access to me is a privilege, right? You don't, mm -hmm. you don't, you, you know, you don't have to be in my presence and I don't have to be in yours, right? And so- We need to make um, that our own talk. That's gotta be a future talk. Like <laughs> you've got to put yeah. those barriers. I mean, that's something you got to learn uh, as you get older. Yeah. Yeah, man. Access yeah. to me is a privilege. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so creating Sorry. these enemies, um, you know, unnecessarily. I, I I believe, you know, and and this is just just my personal feeling on this. All enemies are unnecessary, right? I, I there, there's too much there's too much life to be lived. There's too much I'm trying right. to get to and get through, for me to be dealing with somebody that's that's um antag antagonistic, an adversary, or an opponent. Mm -hmm. And then at, on the flip side of that, right. though, when you talk about um. When you talk about allies, an ally is an associate or a connection for a mutual relationship, friendship or, or resemblance, mm -hmm. right? And so there's some sort of, there's some sort of a connection, there's some sort of um, um, common ground or commonality that you have with your ally as that, that you can sense this mutual um, connectivity, this symbiotic relationship with your ally. And for me, mm -hmm. again, when you talk about recruiting allies, there's really not a whole lot of recruiting that that has to go on for me because it's, it's really just a natural, organic um, connection that occurs through conversation, through life circumstances, life's trials. You see, man, we, we got some we got some things in common here. We got some common goals, man. And we got some common life experiences mm -hmm. and we're kind of along the same line of thinking here. So I feel like this is somebody that I can really continue to build a, a connection and a, and a relationship with. Um, and so, yeah. So when we talk about creating enemies unnecessarily, I feel like any, any enemy is an unnecessary one. And for me, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily have to recruit allies that, that just kind of happened. So for me, man, creating any enemy is unnecessary and, allies don't necessarily have to be recruited it just kind of happens organically through time through conversation um through um a mm -hmm. commonality in life circumstances and we can say okay i, I can see this person that okay. i can continue to build a connection and relationship with right okay well let's let's break these down then so enemies um, you know, and for better or worse, I think anytime I'm going through these, I'm filtering through our, our high schoolers and stuff, but I know we're going to have adults that uh, go through this too, but, uh, some of my answers may, may skew that way. So how can mm -hmm. someone create an enemy? Um, I had mm -hmm. written down a couple and I'm just, just to get us started here, um, reacting negatively. Mm -hmm. 
And from an interesting source, you wouldn't believe who, uh, watching a, a small clip, I watched 50 Cent actually comment on this. Like, don't seek out conflict. Like, why someone accidentally steps on your shoes? Hey, man, and then just move on. Like, you don't have to follow through with some type of aggression or a problem just to show that you're the biggest badass. Don't don't invite mm -hmm. problems because the guy who's doing well at the club isn't looking to fight. It's always the guy who's doing poorly uh, that wants to to cause trouble. So, mm -hmm. reacting negatively, reacting disproportionately to the situation um yeah you know, i know i've got a 12 year old and i know i dealt with this at our at our middle school uh whether it be high school or middle school students but every age group even adults they react disproportionately to the problem so it's usually something else that's bothering them or they haven't learned to flex that emotional muscle that restraint uh and get a handle on that so reacting negatively because someone that could have been completely indifferent to you uh you've now created a, pr a problem with right mm -hmm. so reacting negatively can you see this okay? Is this size okay? Yeah, I, I see it perfectly. Let's see. There we go. All right. Um, talking out of place, talking out of turn. Uh, we could call that gossip, but running your mouth, basically. Talking out of place. Um, so spreading rumors. Uh, even mm -hmm. just uh, inviting your own opinion into the conversation when no one asked for it. So um, Joe and Susie are having a breakup or... Dave got suspended. Well, you know what? Dave should have been suspended. He's, you know, and now mm -hmm. you've invited your opinion and involved yourself when you didn't have to, when you weren't even there. Yeah. What if you only got part of the story? Well, Dave, Dave doesn't know you only got part of the story. He only knows that you were talking bad about him and people like to, we talk about that all the time. People, especially uh, teenagers, they try to circulate that information because they feed off the drama. They want to see what's going on and watch everybody dance. Right. So <laughs> uh, talking out of place, um, holding grudges. So I can let something go or I can hold on to it. So when you hold a grudge, you're holding on to an enemy. You're holding on to a negative relationship and tension that you don't need to. Uh, and I'm not going to get into forgive and forget, but you don't need to hold it over them. Like you said, you can disassociate, right? Mm -hmm. They don't have to be a part of your life, but you don't have to hold a grudge and make sure when you see them in passing and go out of your way to make sure that they know you're upset with them. Um, so holding grudges. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, direct conflict. And that's where someone steps on your shoe or uh, you want to get into an argument or you want to um, involve yourself in that drama directly. So wanting to fight somebody, wanting to argue with somebody. Uh, and the last one I have, um, seeking out division. And I had sent you sometimes, uh, you know, we send videos or clips back and forth to one another. Um, uh, and I got this one from um, that poverty mindset uh, video I sent you uh, last week. And the, we, there is enough that already divides people that mm -hmm. we don't need to necessarily add more. Um, yeah. And when I wrote this list out, the first things that come to mind are the most typical ways to divide a group of people that we don't even think about but religion is one um politics is a big one especially in time we have an election year coming up yeah. and uh which now it seems when i was a kid it seemed like election year happened every three or four years right they would start gearing up now it's every every year every always, year yeah that news cycle never turns off they're always running mm -hmm. that um and then uh even sports teams so it can be professional my team versus your team but really even at like the high school level and college level um people seem to draw these battle lines and separate them versus me or they versus us uh mm -hmm. and it's one thing to be enthusiastic about a cause. That's another thing to actually let that become a barrier uh, to a relationship. And I don't mean dating or being involved with somebody. I just mean a human to human relationship uh, with another person. So letting that, you know, people like the label, the Jews, right? That's, you hear that phrase throughout history, the Jews over there, you know, uh, and that can be used for any, uh, you know, uh, political party, the communists, right? The red scare uh, back in the seventies and eighties, or I know it was at fifties. When was McCarthy? Do you remember that period of history? can't remember. I do not. But anyway, uh, so anyone, there was a terrible fear that anyone could be a communist. And so people were divided uh, and ridiculed. Uh, now we deal with the, um, the the trans conversation, transphobia, that kind of thing that's been coming in. LGBTQ has been around here for quite some time now, but that was very divisive and gay marriage was the big issue. Um, and what your opinion was, whether you were um, uh, gay or not, your opinion of it, uh, 
and where you fell on that, people would actually cut you out of their lives for that reason. Um, mm -hmm. And they wouldn't associate with you. Instead of being part of the conversation and being involved, now we've drawn these battle lines. Um, and I'm not here, you're not here to debate any of those topics one-on-one -on -one or in depth. We're just saying that these are lines of division that people create unnecessarily. And social media has become a big part of that. Because mm -hmm. as you interact with social media, it's just going to show you more of what you interact with. So you end up exactly. getting more and more polarized opinions because all you see is what reinforces your own beliefs. That's what you interact with. So now you have this perception that everybody agrees with me. I'm not hearing other parts of the conversation or the other opinions or the gray middle uh, area. And so everyone's real polarized and everyone's just shouting. And now we have this sense of entitlement that you have to agree with me. Right. That's mm -hmm. where everybody seems to be at these days. Um, so those are some of the ways I've written down that you can create enemies uh, unnecessarily. And when I say enemy, I don't mean someone that's indifferent. And you I love that you wouldn't grab the, the definition. You had two or three different groups of description in there. One was um, an antagonist. So they're just mm -hmm. just they're just not rooting for you. Right. They're not in your corner yeah. and they're they're probably talking against you. One is an opponent. So in their direct mm -hmm. competition with you. And what was the other one we had? Adversary. Opponent. What else did you have? Adversary. adversary. Those mm -hmm. kind of goes together. So adversary might not be a direct opponent, but they are competing for, you know, mm -hmm. you both want to outdo the other, let's say, instead yeah. of we're both going for the same job or the same position on the team. Uh, we both want our team to win or we want to mm -hmm. uh, perform better. And the other one was the antagonist. So they're talking about you. Mm -hmm. um, an antagonist. And how about this? An antagonist is an opportunist. If there is a chance, they're not really plotting against you, but if there's a chance to undermine you, they will. So life, as we just said, life is not fair. Life is hard. Why would you go out of your way to make it any more difficult than you need to be? Because people, they they stay in this zone of neutrality, I'll call it right here, live on the podcast, zone of neutrality. So I don't have any hate towards Joe Bob way out there in the world. You can't even read my handwriting. Um so he's in the zone of neutrality. If he passes me on the sidewalk or at school, he doesn't know me. I don't know him. Go be about, go be on your way. Right. But I have to actually do something to move him into the enemy column. Right. Mm -hmm. Similarly, I have to do something to move him into the friend column. Right. And there's a difference between friend. Oh, if I'm going to do this, I've got to get better handwriting um, between friend and ally. Okay. Allies, plural, doesn't matter. Um, so the reason I bring that up and I'm going to go ahead and take it off the screen share while I talk, because I'm pretty sure this is just going to bounce between, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to show your face, my face or just the screen share. Um, but uh, the reason I want to make that distinction is a friend, oops, a friend is not necessarily an ally and an ally is not necessarily a friend. Mm -hmm. And what, so one doesn't guarantee the other, and one doesn't have to be the other. How do I write? There we go. Okay. So we'll bring that back up on the screen there as I, after I fixed it. Um, there we go. Okay. So Mr. K, you talked and you shared some of your story with us last week about becoming a, uh, substitute teacher, then becoming mm -hmm. a teacher. Uh, we talked about dark times and things like that. And the people that actually showed up for you, um, were there people that you considered a friend that turned out not to be that, that didn't, that either didn't turn out not to be a friend or they didn't show up as an ally to help you through that dark time, even though they were your friend, you considered them a friend. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would absolutely say that. So, uh, in my experience, there are those I thought I was closest with that didn't help at all. And mm -hmm. not only did they not help, uh, some refused help. Um, some mm -hmm. just, they, they knew that something was going on and didn't reach out. Then there were others, these allies that came through and came through in a big way from mm -hmm. unsuspecting places that I didn't even know that we were friends. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's a distinction that needs to be made between the friends and between the allies. Um, so over here, a friend, what would you describe a couple bullet points? What's a friend? Someone that what? Um, some of you I'm going to write similar with. interest. Yeah. Yeah. Similar interest. Um, okay. Someone you spend time with. Someone you spend time with, maybe um, enjoy their company. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so allies, uh, some of my biggest allies were people that were significantly older than me. 
that had uh, maybe they had the resources to help uh, or help in a different way, but we didn't have similar interests. We didn't hang out a lot. We we maybe enjoyed spending time with one another, but um, I, I've also had coworkers that I didn't know I was just cordial with that have come through mm-hmm. for me in a big way. So yeah. back to your definition, what did you have for allies? So when I go to allies, it, it's someone that um, you associate with, it's someone you connect with, by some mutual relationship. Um, there, there's a, there's a commonality there. Okay. And there's also a part of the definition that does say there's a, there's friendship there as well. They do include friendship. Okay. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm, I'm getting that from, uh, from dictionary.com. I and mean, that's right. I love that they specify the mutual relationship. So uh, when we hear the term allies, we usually think geopolitical, right? And mm-hmm. wartime um, and and Russia and, or Soviet Union, more accurately, and mm-hmm. the U.S. can be a, a good examples of that. Enemy of my enemy is my friend. So we're mm-hmm. not friends, but we have a mutual enemy. So we're going to be allies. So we have a mutual relationship, a shared interest, a shared goal. Mm-hmm. Um, and we are both stakeholders Yeah. in that. So I think in order for an ally to exist, you have to have stakeholders that are mm-hmm. invested. You know, um, a good, a good, uh, just a silly example. Uh, you ever heard an NBA player, NFL player buy his mom and dad a house, right? Oh, yeah. uh, because they supported them all through school, worked those four jobs, right? So they want to mm-hmm. come back and they want to help, right? They want to take care of them. Now, Shaq's a great example. I love listening to Shaq talk. Uh, oh, man. But they were stakeholders all through high school and college and uh, working those multiple jobs, staying up late, getting them into practice and all of that. So they were invested in that outcome. Um, but you could either have shareholders, uh, stakeholders, or you could have um, – shared goals Mm -hmm. and i and i love that example of of a parent um because a lot of times man parents parents want to befriend their kids and and i'm not here to be my kid's friend look i Mm -hmm. again like i stated earlier i'm i'm 42 i I don't need a nine-year-old friend right right but (laughs) but i i would love to believe that i am my nine-year-old's ally my 17-year-old's ally right Mm -hmm. um and so I, I love that distinction between an ally and a friend, right? Mm-hmm. Um, friend, you're, you're more on the same level, same kind of playing field as far as mm-hmm. uh, where you are in life, mm-hmm. um, your age, your stage, things like that. But those allies, those are people, man, that that when you're when you're down in the mud, <laughs> when you're down right. in the dumps, like I I need a strength beyond myself to kind of help pull me through this um, so that we can kind of get to the other side and see our way clear. I love that you said that. And we were going to the same place with it. Check this out. I I think I'm doing it below on the screen where you can't see it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to update my screen here. There it is. So here you go. You've got Johnny down here. He's sad. And he says, I don't know if I can do this. So he's in this, mindset of self-pity how does an ally respond how does a friend respond so mr k how does a friend respond to this oh man me neither <laughs> i can't believe you're that's not fair you're you're yeah i can't that's so sad like I, uh-huh. yeah that's hard right i can't mm-hmm. do it mm-hmm. you, they don't they shouldn't be mean to you right <laughs> so these guys are going to sympathize Maybe give you a little bit of advice, but they're going to sympathize. Oh, you poor thing. What's an ally going to do? You're just saying, pull uh, you through it. What are they going to do? Yeah. So, so an ally is going to, going to look for uh, an ally solution oriented. Mm-hmm. They're, they're, uh, they're goal driven. They're, they're seeking a way to, to support, um, and to, to pull you through this. Right. They're going to push or pull you through this. So they are, they they know the goal, so they are goal oriented. They know the mission, and they are not going to sit down and pity party you. It's not coming. That's right. And sometimes they're going to. I don't want to say it. They're going to. Uh, no, I'm not going to say it because we don't know who's listening. I'm going to change <laughs> the way I would phrase it. Talking to anybody else, uh, <laughs> cameras change how you behave. Um, they're going to motivate you, cheer you up a little bit if they need yeah. to, but they're mm-hmm. going to tell you what you need to hear. And the friend is going to tell you what you want to hear, yeah. I think is a big distinction. 
and, um, and something something that just came to mind, Mr. V, is is when you think about your friends and your best friend. Mm-hmm. For me, man, my best friends are my allies, right? They're they're both, right? Right. Mm-hmm. And so, your best friend that that one that that really is in your corner. If if you're really really a friend, and I'm talking about you know best friend. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that, yeah, they're, they're going to to sympathize and even empathize with you, but they're also in the same breath going to pull you up by your bootstraps and t- tell you not necessarily what you want to hear, but what you need to hear to get to the other side of that situation, man. And so, again, this this distinction between friend and ally is really, really critical when we're talking about building meaningful relationships with other people. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. When when I look back on it, I'm like, okay, this person that has been in my life and it can, you know, it can be for an extended period of time. When you start looking at the things that you go through, because I heard it said that love is only a theory until it's tested. Right. Mm -hmm. So once that once that love is tested or once that relationship is tried through whatever circumstance or situation that goes on in life, the Mm -hmm. way that those people who you feel are closely connected to you respond to those situations is going to tell you a whole lot about the dynamic Mm -hmm. of that relationship. Right. Absolutely. So maybe a good way to look at it. You still have the, the screen share up. You still able to see that? Yep. So if we draw these people, these relationships, these levels out vertically, um, people are going to start here by default and your relationship with them is either going to move in a positive or negative direction. Mm -hmm. And I like what you said. So we have friends, right? We have maybe there's a zone in here in the middle called associates, Mm -hmm. right? But then there's friends. And as you move up, the only ones are going to get that moniker of best friend to you and oh, I, I got to control it from here for you to see it for someone to reach this ally uh, level. They and they have to be your best friend. Right. So or I should say to be your best friend, they have to be an ally. They you yeah, have to know that yeah. they have your back, that they're going to push and pull you. They and you have to give them permission to do that. I oh, think. That, so ooh, you. So here we go. I'm so glad you said that mm-hmm. because so many friendships and, and you challenged man, you challenged me with this with your book. Mm-hmm. Because you said right there in that first chapter, how many people can you go go to with the deepest part and the most intimate details of your life? And for a lot of people, that's finances. We don't want to. We don't want anybody oh. to know how much we make. We don't want right. anybody to know how much debt we're in. We don't mm-hmm. want anybody to know how we're how many how much how many credit cards we have. Like that is very sensitive and privileged information. Right. And so a lot, man. I start thinking about. It, I said, man, a lot of the relationships I'm in are surfacey. Like mm-hmm. they're surfacy, right? And so just just like you said, we we have to, if if we want an ally, it is not it is not fair for us to to um put people in this this uh this 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 place in our life to be mind readers mm-hmm. or to to automatically know all of the trials and tribulations that I'm going through in my life. If if they don't know that and, you know, you need help and you're not even putting yourself out there to be vulnerable enough to get the help that you need because of pride. <laughs> right. Because you don't want people to really know what's really going on in your life. Um, then that's not fair to paint those people in that light. Like, oh, man, you were never for me or you were never my friend to begin with. If they didn't even know that you were dealing with whatever it was that you were dealing with. So you've I got, love that. To, so if you you've see, got to yeah. be humble enough and vulnerable enough to let people in. <laughs> so vulnerability and be humble, humility, right? Oh, so humility, you got to yes. let that guard down. We're not saying, yeah, we're not saying you got to let it down with everyone. Exactly. But if you want an ally, mm-hmm. it requires from you that you mm-hmm. have to be vulnerable. You have to be humble. So to break these down for people that aren't familiar with these words, um, you know, humble is I don't know everything. There's more mm-hmm. I can learn and I can learn from you. That's exactly humble, mm-hmm. right. You don't always have the answer. It's crowdsourcing. Help me mm-hmm. reach the the answer. Mm-hmm. Vulnerability. I'm going to you have to be willing to share information with people that they could use to hurt you. 
Ooh, right. That's, that's how good. I would say it. The easiest that, that, understanding of it. So, so and, and so that doesn't mean here's my worst <laughs> secret. It means uh, I don't want everyone to know this, but you're going to need mm -hmm. this piece of information if you're going to help me in that journey to get to the answer. Does that's that make so sense? Good. Yeah, it, it's a risk. Mm -hmm. It's a risk to be vulnerable. It's a risk to be in mm -hmm. relationships with people. And so if, if, mm -hmm. if you want to be siloed, if you want to be insulated, then, hey, be by yourself. Don't put yourself out there. Don't take any risk when it comes to relationships. But if you need which you're going to need allies, if you want real allies in your life and true friends, we're talking about best friends in your life. You've got to exercise that humility and that vulnerability. Absolutely. I'm trying to figure out how to scroll on the screen. There we go. All right. So, and I use the word recruit. So let's apply some of this as we wrap up our discussion. So the, the talk is about recruiting those allies. You know, we know mm -hmm. we don't want enemies. We don't want to leave this trail of breadcrumbs is how I like to say it for bad luck and bad karma to follow us back to our door, right? Mm -hmm. Every time you make an enemy, you leave an additional breadcrumb out there for bad luck and bad karma to find you. So I use the word recruit and you kind of you kind of took that differently than how I intended it. And for those of you who are teachers, that's called encoding and decoding, right? So <laughs> he decoded it differently than I encoded it. So I had to show off the fact that I went to 11th grade. There you go. All right. So <laughs> you have to recruit allies. And I don't mean necessarily go seek them out, although that is what you could use what I'm about to do here uh, to do. Mm -hmm. What I mean is it has to be intentional. Um, yes. you have to do, we talked about these things over here on the screen. Um, you know, give them permission, be vulnerable, be humble. It's a mutual relationship. Um, so we're going to talk about when you recruit allies, when you make them, as Mr. K said in his definition, that best friend level, these are the things you have to do to cultivate, to build mm -hmm. that relationship and to build that ally, uh, relationship. So, um, it, first and foremost, like he said, mutual relationship to me, the word that comes to mind is reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Ugh, this tablet was not made for left-handed people. I will tell you that much. I forgot for you were a lefty. This, this, this world discriminates against left-handed people. All right. Hey. Reciprocity. So mm -hmm. reciprocity, what does that mean, Mr. K? Do you know what that means? Yeah. So reciprocity is there, there is this mutual um, giving and taking of both parties. Um, what, what mm -hmm. I do for you, you do for me. Um, if, if I'm willing to, to take it to that level with you, you can you need to be willing to take it to that level with me. So there's a mutual um, behavioral aspect, a mutual respect there, and also um, a mutual outcome that we both desire out of this relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. So I just had the three year old walking on me and she's in nothing but a diaper. Hey, baby. <laughs> I love Hi, it. I'm on the phone. Can you go back? Go back to mommy. Let's go get AJ. Go get AJ. You're going to pop that balloon on my podcast. What you're going to do? I might leave this in. So I love that you said the word level. If she, Can you hear her, by the way? Is she a distraction? No, not at all. Because Okay. For the moment, she's crafty. All right. So I love that you use the word level because when you, you talk about reciprocity and this give and take, a lot of people look at it at a artificial, superficial level. Um, I buy you dinner. You buy me dinner. Mm -hmm. I drive you to work. You drive me to work. It can be those things. But to take it to that level is how you said it. I love that. If I'm going to be vulnerable with you, yes, you have to be vulnerable with me. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to be humble and open with you and honest and give you that, that channel of feedback and communication, you have to give it to me. And more importantly, if I'm going to give you permission to talk to me in a certain way and push me when I don't want to be pushed and tell me the things I need to hear, you have to give me that permission too. That's reciprocity. Yes. Right? So it goes on many different levels, That's but so the good. relationship is two directions, right? Mm -hmm. It goes both ways. Yeah. Um, and then, so I like to say you have to invest in others' success. That's so good. I don't like how the tablet messed up, but you heard me say success as I wrote it. So invest in other success. What do I mean by that? That can be your mm -hmm. goals. It can be short term or long term. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be your legacy. It can be a project you're working on. Uh, it can be your relationships, right? I want to see you and your wife have a healthy, happy relationship. And that doesn't mm -hmm. mean I go talk to your wife for you on your behalf. It means when you come to me and you're like, man, my wife's a pain in the ass. Not that he's ever said that. Um, it's, it's, it's not, man, I can't believe she talked to you that way. It's well, Hey, well, you know, 
what did you do right before that? Mm-hmm. Well, why didn't you make the coffee the night before? She's got a good point. Man, mm-hmm. it's a, yeah, I know you don't want to hear it, but you know what? Would she have yelled at you if you made the coffee? But I was tired. No, no, no. Would she have yelled at you if you made the coffee? All right, mm-hmm. take that off the table. Do that little thing, right? So um, investing in other success. Now, there's another book. I love having my library right behind me. And it's <laughs> on my top shelf. If I go back to widescreen, you can probably see it. Um, I don't know. Are you able to see me or are you just looking at the... I can the, see. Okay, well, if I go back to widescreen here, mm-hmm. and, and I don't know what actually makes it work because this is a new program for me for who gets what. But can you see both bookshelves or just one? Am I in the center or can you see yeah, wide? I just, I just see one. Okay. Well, all right. Doesn't matter. Hold on. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It's on my top on uh, shelf of honor, uh, top 10 books. It's called never eat alone by Keith mm. Ferrazzi. Okay. And his whole thing is about investing in others as success and things like that. And it's about, uh, relationship management. Right. Um, and the three things he identifies. Okay. So to so invest he in other success, you can do it team three Those are the three you things can invest that in their health, matter the most to people when it comes to what they hold closest to their heart. their legacy. Their health, it can be, hey, I've got cancer. Hey, I'm out of shape. Uh, hey, I'm dealing with diabetes and they only serve junk food in the commissary. It can be a multitude of things. Their wealth, their success, their financial success, their financial health, uh, their well-being. Uh, are they renting? Are they owning? Are they facing uh, bankruptcy? Um, you know, are you, are you a positive impact on their bank account or negative? So I use a very simple example, side-by-side comparison of somebody whose friends, um, say, Hey, we're going to go to the game. Do you want to go, uh, to the game with us? And, uh, that's where both situations are the same. And then one scenario, the friends peer pressure them into going with them. And then I follow a trail of chain of events where they end up spending all this money and now they're broke versus Mm -hmm. no, man, I'm not going to go, but we can watch you here at my house or you can come here after the game and we'll eat here at the house. And they only spend this much money and those friends are supportive and they're not pressuring him. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. But helping someone advance in their career, helping someone get that job. So Mr. K, I asked you, five people that made an impact on your life. You told me that there was a principal when you were a teacher, they yeah. wrote, they created a position and went mm-hmm. with the grant, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So tell that story for those who didn't watch the last video. Yeah. So when I, when I um, initially graduated from college, I, I got my degree in youth ministry, um, but found out that I wasn't going to be able to work full time mm-hmm. and earn money with that degree. And so um, next best thing was working with kids. And so I started off as a substitute teacher and it just so happened that the school that my, my baby sister went to, who was in the fourth grade at the time, whenever I would go pick her up from school, I would, um, you know, I was cordial to the principal, the other teachers and adults in the building. I'd high five the kids as they were coming out of the building. And I, apparently I did this consistently enough for the principal at that time. And so just through um, a series of me coming to pick up my baby sister and having those few interactions, she saw something in me as a 22 year old young man where she wrote a, a, a position called the successful intervention program coordinator, where I would basically be working in the school every day with a small group of kids, helping them with their, their grades, their behavior and offering um, counseling as well. And um, they would go through the successful intervention program and um, they would graduate out once um, we felt like they had met these certain um, checkpoints as while they were in the program. And so, yeah, she, she wrote that grant and, um, with me in mind, she told me so that I could, I could be that as one of my initial jobs as an educator. There you go. So, um, do you and her hang out two or three days a week, every weekend? Not at all. So I wouldn't necessarily call her a friend. Nope. Was she an ally? Absolutely. And if she called you today and needed help, would you have shown up for her? Would you show up for her today? If she called and needed help? Yes. That's an ally. That's a mutual relationship. That is shared goals. That is stakeholders. That is, there you go. Mm -hmm. Right. So she hits you here in wealth, right? She helped you with your career because that's how you take care of your family. It's how you reach your goals. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a bit of pride and hubris that comes with your career and growing in it. Right. So she helped you advance there. And now 
she's probably earned a lifelong ally in you. The next one is legacy. So this can be um, what's going to outlast you or what do you care about most besides yourself, right? Mm -hmm. And for many people, the very obvious answer, if I said, what is your legacy, Mr. K, would you say your children? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, it can also be your business. Mm -hmm. It can be your charity or it can be your cause. Let's say I'm a parent and my kid wants to get into a certain school. I help them get into that school. My kid wants to make the team. They didn't make the team. I talk to the coach. They make the team. Um, I've got a small business. I'm a small business owner. Uh, they choose to do business with me instead of the big box shop. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe I need uh, uh, to get this building or this land rezoned so I can use it for my business because I know it will grow if I do. And town council says no. They help me get it approved. They talk to somebody for me. Uh, my charity, I'm trying, I've got a cause, uh, I, someone that, so donating to someone's cause, um, uh, finding someone to volunteer for the cause, right? Or just telling people about it and promoting it. Uh, or uh, when I say cause also, um, it may not be my organization, but, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I had a grandmother who passed away a few years back that was highly, highly devoted to environmentalism and saving the Buffalo River and conservation acts. Um, and so were her peer group. And if somebody were to volunteer as a part of that or help with the legislation or writing grants or whatever it might be, they were instantly in her good graces. Um, mm -hmm. So your ability to reach out and recruit these allies, uh, I think not only do you need this reciprocity, this reciprocal relationship, but you need to invest in someone else's success in these ways. These are some examples that you can do that. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not a tool for manipulation because if you try to manipulate and you do this once or twice, they're going to see through that, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, to have a true ally, re allied relationship, um, this is ongoing. And as soon as yeah. you're no longer uh, committed to helping them succeed, that might that might dissipate, right? So, so you've so got to have shared goals. You got to be stakeholders. Mm -hmm. You have to be invested. Yeah. So here, here's the word um, that comes to mind. There has to be trust. There has to be trust. And so I, I feel like trust. I love it. There, there needs to be a lesson on how do we how do we build that trust, right? What what is trust? How do we, mm -hmm. how do we build that? Because when I think about, which I, I love the fact that you took me back to um, Mrs. Pat Martinka, she saw enough of me over time. The same, she saw the consistency and the, mm -hmm. and, and, and the same character, the same behaviors, the same energy, the same passion consistently enough for her to go out on a limb on this kid who was, who was barely out of college and say, you know what? I'm writing a grant and he's going to be the one to fill that position for that grant. So there was, there was a level of trust there that she had to instill in me um, in order for mm -hmm. her to be uh, my ally. Is there any vulnerability on her part? If she were to not, because you work in uh, school admin schools mm -hmm. have a budget. And people have to approve any changes to that, right? Yeah. So she had to go with her existing budget and say, I need more money mm -hmm. for this guy over here. That's so good. That's good. Right? Yep. Could, is that her being vulnerable? You could have mm -hmm. let her down. You could have embarrassed her Yeah. if that didn't work out. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. So she's investing in you. And you know what? To my point, to my point earlier, um, this reciprocal relationship, um, you know, how, how many, sorry, how many years ago was that when she wrote that grant? So that was 2003, 2003. So 20 years ago. So 20, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys talk much anymore? Hardly? No. Mm -mm. Nope. No. Mm -hmm. But would you still consider her your ally and your hers if she were to call and, and an opportunity for you to help her succeed? It Right. Yes. So this isn't a, I, this isn't a, a contest. It's not a contest. It's mm -hmm. not how often it's when the need arises, am I in a position to help? And did I mm -hmm. show up to help? Right. Yes. So yes. showing up to help. And, and I love that Mr. V because a true ally, their motives are pure, right? Because there was a double edged sword there. Because yes, she, she, she needed someone in position to serve the at-risk students in her student population. But also she 
on, on one right. side, she got that. But on the other side of that, she was able to like something in a young man that that not only provided a, a service for her and, and what she needed for her organization, but also set that young man on a path mm-hmm. for his life's work. <laughs> For a career like like right. man, I'm 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 literally ten right. years away from retiring as an educator because of what she did for me when I was twenty two years old. Did so she it, open so, that door? Yeah. So at fifty two, man, I, I'm eligible to retire check because it out. of that because of that move that she made. So think of what she did in that one act. Mm. Okay, I said I said wealth. Right, we talked wealth. Did she in a big way, can I change colors? No, maybe not. Did she in a big way impact all of this? Yes. Inadvertently? Yes. I was I was thinking that same thing when you said that. So because it it, it can have a, a compound mm-hmm. effect, a compound impact. Because check this out. Right. <laughs> Look, I, man, I, I got I got married. That was 2003. I got married 2005. Right. That was my source of income mm-hmm. when I got married. Right. And watch this. The school that I was at, Mr. V, to get yeah. deep, the school that I was at at the time, Mr. V, because my wife <laughs> was an education major and wanted to become a teacher. There was an open door in the pre-K program at that same exact school. So now my wife can come in because of that connection, because of that open door. And now she has a job and a career. Now my wife has been an educator for, for uh, 18 plus years because of that as well. And so this is the compound effect and the compound impact that these um, relationships can have on your life can be very, very profound. All right, so mm-hmm. we've got up here, we have Martinka. As far as she may, you know, she get she probably had a little wisdom to her, but she knew if I invest in this young man, he'll go help others, right? But she didn't have any way of knowing for sure. And to what extent? You could have just stayed a teacher the rest of your life and not been involved in all these other extracurriculars. But here it is. Here's Mr. K. And we already know she immediately, sorry for the tablet, helped your wife. Mm-hmm. And then through that, you have helped me. And I can go and impact these people. But how many other teachers have wow. you helped? Right. And this is just teaching. This is, I'm sorry for the, the tablet. This is charity. And it probably helped you in some way be a better uh, youth minister mm-hmm. or involved in your church community leader. And then how many branched off of this? And so Man. it just continues to grow and compound. Like you said, it has this compounding effect. So Ooh. this person here and this person here, do they ever come to you and say, Mr. K, thank you. Mm-hmm. When instead, do they realize that maybe they should be going to her uh, and saying, thank you. Cause mm. that's where it, it, without that happening, what if this may, none of this may not have happened had she not done that. Ooh. And it goes further. Who did it for her? Ooh, that's good. <laughs> that's so right. Good. You can't see cause I'm on the other uh, uh, screen. How far, how far back does this go? Ooh. Right. So you can recruit allies and step into this compounding effect, this flow, right. Or you can create enemies and you just stay in this negative spiral and you don't go anywhere. But this Ooh. over here, if you want to leave the world better than you left it, you're going to need allies and you need to step into this, this continuation, this continuous flow of generosity, reciprocity, trust, and love. Right. Ooh. Boom. <laughs> Mike drop. That's so good. right. Let's end it there. That's so all good. right. So, <laughs> so what we're trying to tell you, listener out there in the world, there there are people in this zone of neutrality. There are associates. There are friends. But then there are allies. There are people that are going to help push and pull you forward. That are going to invest in your success, and you owe it to them to invest in their success as well. And it doesn't mean it's automatic. I do for you. You do for me. Those relationships, as Mr. K pointed out, because when he first heard the word recruit, maybe that's how he took it. It's organic Mm -hmm. in his words. You will find through your list of friends or associates, those people will prove themselves to you because Mm -hmm. they will step up when it's needed. Right. So when Mm -hmm. the problem arises, they'll just show up. Mm -hmm. Right. They just they just tend to be there and then everyone else fades into the background. Those are your allies. That's good. Okay. So good. All right, Mr. K, 
a lot of love for you, sir. Thank you for joining us today. And uh, I will continue to try to edit last week's video and this one, and we'll try to get it up for everybody. But I think we this was even better than last one. Man, Jules, man, I'm I'm sitting here. I'm I'm finna now. Once we get off, I'm I'm just gonna go to my room and cry. It, it was that powerful. <laughs> <laughs> so good, man. So good. Well, well, so I gotta real, figure out what we're gonna talk about next week. So real talk.